Good morning, everyone. I've got some news for you this morning. You perhaps noticed, conspicuous by absence, that we have no organist. She is under the weather. Consequently, we are going to make a couple of adjustments. Uh, Divine Service 4 is what we're going to use, so you're going to need your hymnal. Um, there's no chanting or anything like that in there. We're going to sing along with the CD on the uh, opening hymn and the sermon hymn, because we have those. But the sermon hymn on the board is not the one we're going to use. Okay. And then at the end, we're going to try and find a G, and then we're going to sing the doxology. Being an old country boy, a G can be difficult for me because I might just turn right. You folks don't plow a whole lot, do you? Anyway, we're going to get through this. Uh, the Curie and the Gloria and Excelsis will read together uh, in unison. So a lot of things that would normally be sung or chanted will be read. We're making these adjustments, and we are going to get through this, and hopefully uh, our dear organist will be better next week, and we'll go back to regular. In the meantime, let's sing to the glory of Christ. Remembering God's great gifts to us in holy baptism, we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. 
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. How great are your works, O Lord. Your thoughts are very deep. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to, to sing, sing praises, praises to your name, name most, most high. high, to declare your steadfast love in the morning, and your faithfulness by night to the music of the lute and the harp for you O Lord have made me glad by your work glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever Amen how great are your works O Lord We speak the Kyrie together. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We speak in unison, Gloria in Excelsior. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Goodwill from God in heaven, proclaimed at Jesus' birth. We praise and bless you, Father. Your holy name we sing. Our thanks for your great glory, Lord God, our heavenly King. To you, O soul begotten, the Father's Son, we pray. O Lamb of God, our Savior, you take our sins away. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Receive our heartfelt cry, where you in power are seated at God's right hand on high. For you alone are holy. You only are the Lord, forever and forever be worshipped and adored. You with the Holy Spirit, alone our Lord most high, in God the Father's glory, amen, our glad reply. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceeds, Grant to us, your humble servants, your holy inspiration, that we may set our minds on things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated to hear the reading of God's Word. Our Old Testament reading is found written in Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter. So you, son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from his way, that wicked person shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, that person shall die in his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Our epistle reading is found written in Paul's epistle to the Romans, chapter 13. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is a servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For because of this you also pay taxes, for the authorities are ministers of God, attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, 
Respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise in honor of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia. We speak together the Alleluia in verse. Alleluia. 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 These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world for temptations to sin. For it is necessary that temptations come, but woe to the one by whom the temptation comes. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It's better you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it truly, I say to you, he rejoices over it more than the ninety-nine who never went astray. So it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Having heard the word of God, let us make a common confession of our faith as is stated in the ancient Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our hymn of the day, number 621. 621.
Okay. Well, now, I'm thinking that reading in unison hymn number 621 would absolutely work. That's my thoughts. We'll read together. We read him 621. Let all mortal flesh keep silence and with fear and trembling stand. Ponder nothing earthly minded, for with blessing in his hand, Christ our God to earth descending comes our homage to demand. King of kings, yet born of Mary, as of old on earth he stood. Lord of hosts in human vesture, in the body and the blood. He will give to all the faithful his own self for heavenly food. Rank on rank, the host of heaven spreads its vanguard on the way as the light of light descending from the realms of endless day. Comes the powers of hell to things as the darkness clears the way. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I guess I can kind of see the disciples' viewpoint from our gospel reading today. I know my own thinking can go off the rails pretty quickly. Matthew 17, 24 through Matthew 18, 35 covers the course of a day. And the disciples had been on the road, and they come into the house. The one where Jesus stayed. And they're wound up really tight, looking forward to becoming dignitaries in the new kingdom. And by the kingdom, they mean the political messianic kingdom on earth. You see, their notions did not yet rise above their contemporaries. Three of them had already been specially honored with marks of favor. Peter had been preeminently distinguished. It would be how for all of them when they came into the kingdom. You can almost hear the, the banner and the teasing. I'm going to make a mighty fine prime minister, I can tell you that. Oh, yes, your lowness. And they mock and bow, you peasant. And then they would speak. Oh, I'm like the joint chiefs of staff, I think. I say, let's ask Jesus. So they did ask him. Who is literally greater in the kingdom of heaven? They're assuming that all 12 of them will be great. You see, it's a question of rank. That's an old English word, root, and it means proud, rebellious, and sturdy. The striking miracle with the temple tax paid by the coin in the mouth of the fish had just taken place. And a very short time has elapsed since their return to the house. And on the way, they've quarreled amongst themselves as to the rank and the degree in their own circle. And thus was the devil of pride raising his ugly head in their midst. Now their discussion had been carried on secretly, but Jesus knew and he questioned them about it. Mark 9:33. What were you discussing on the way? They fall quiet. Their enthusiasm wanes a little bit. They're a, a little guilt embarrassed. And they tell him, but they rephrase the supposed problem. Well, who then, Jesus, in your opinion, is to be considered greater in the kingdom of heaven? Wow. Jesus had repeatedly tried to show them that his kingdom 
was not a visible, physical, temporal kingdom. But it consisted of his reign in the hearts of believers. And that idea was still not grasped. They want plain, concrete evidence. So Christ is determined to make his answer very plain. And he demonstrates very palpably. The teaching is crystal clear. Verse 2, And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly, I said to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoa, that's harsh. Our Lord teaches here not only by spoken parables, but by symbolical actions also. And these few verses paint a snapshot for us in a little child. Now that means it wasn't just a mere infant that he called to him. Tradition asserts that this child was the martyr Ignatius. Who knows? I'm not telling you that for a fact. But Jesus called this child to him and he set him in their midst. I'm going to ask you for a bit of poetic latitude this morning in order that we might gain just a, a little clearer vision of the scope of these verses. Please see in your mind's eye, Jesus calls out, little Iggy, would you come over here and see Jesus for just a moment? Now Iggy's busy playing on the floor with his new Tonka truck, but he jumps up to his feet and he runs to Jesus. He knows the voice. It's familiar. He knows Jesus. And his mom, probably someone who lives with Mary also, just smiles while she wipes the supper dishes. And tiny feet stomp across the floor as little Iggy runs up to Jesus and he throws both arms in the air and he leaps into Jesus' arms. And Jesus holds him close. Perhaps he cups his tiny little head with his hand. Maybe, just maybe, Maybe he puts a small kiss of affection on that. And the lad buries his head in his shoulder of Christ. Does Jesus put that kiss of affection on while patting him? Why not? Our Lord's very compassionate. St. Mark tells us that he called him and took him in his arms. Christ's love is most tender. Igzy? Would you do something for me? Was this child so close to Jesus that he had a nickname? Is that possible? I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility. Would you stand here by me for a minute while I talk to the fellas? And he puts the child down. And, and you see little Iggy standing there by the Lord. His eyes are bright. And he casts sideways glances up there to make sure he's doing a good job. He's doing it right. And he stands as tall and as still as a little child can. And see Jesus reach out his reassuring hand and rest it on the small boy. Now that you have that picture, the teaching begins. This is a demonstratio ad oculus. A demonstration to the eye. The attention of all the disciples is there on the boy. And this is going to be stamped on their eyes. From the boy's trustfulness and submission, Jesus draws a much-needed lesson for the ambitious disciples. With a quiet and perhaps even a sad, somber tone, he shares the solemn truth about the kingdom, his real kingdom. Unless you are turn and become the child is furnishing the subject for a very impressive lesson it's a very solemn introduction most emphatically he declares that they must turn around and head in the opposite direction they had indeed accepted and confessed Jesus but they'd also just confessed that they were still far from possessing that condition of mind and heart which is indispensable in a servant of Christ. The just shall live by faith five times in the scriptures. Their faith could never stand and last at that rate. 
They're taken back to the very portals of the kingdom that they thought they knew. They're told the conditions of that which alone admits to the kingdom. This same principle, the same condition applies to continuance in it. You see, their contending about the higher places was endangering their place in the kingdom because they were losing the qualifier, which is faith. The turning here is an action of the heart, and it's only possible by the power of grace. It wasn't a mere change of conduct, not just quitting the rivalry and ambition. This is the turning that's required of Nicodemus in John 3.3. 3. This is a change of mind, a regeneration way of thinking. You have to become like little Iggy here. Well, he's now down on the floor playing, distracted by a bug. But did you see how he just came when I called? There's no conscious gratification there. He doesn't think he's a wonderful child just because he came when I called him. He doesn't own anything, let alone a lot of property. He's, he's not in charge of anything. He trusts for his daily bread. He trusts for protection in the dark of night when things go bump. Fellas, do, do you see? Do you see the difference? See Jesus' eyes. He's telling them, if you don't, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have to understand, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Folks, that still speaks volumes to us this morning. Jesus sketches what excellence in the kingdom is. It's childlikeness, not childishness. There's way too much of that in the church. And there's a vast difference in the two. To permit oneself to be called, led, and loved without pride or doubt, simple trust, possessing nothing and needing everything, able to do nothing but to receive everything, unable to earn but receiving everything as a gift, compare the Lord's Prayer. What do we say? Our Father, grant us our daily bread that we trust for. This humble trustfulness is a good summary of justification by faith in our relationship to Jesus. We are God's children by adoption and are exhorted to become as dear children. Ephesians 5.1 says, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children. And these 12 officers, full-grown men, have to return to childhood, becoming like little children to enter the kingdom. Grown up in faith. The Greek original here is very powerful. Uh, you turn and you become our momentary acts there in the aorist tense. And will never is the strongest form of negation possible. It is not not in a future indicative. You're not here for a grammar lesson and I'm not here to give you one. But the kingdom is closed to all of those who refuse to become as little children in trust. And then can you imagine the stunned disciples here? Now, you want to know how to become greater? Become like this child. Folks, believing and trusting God can hardly be overemphasized. You see, even greatness in the kingdom by whoever is based on the original condition for entrance into the kingdom. The turning of faith in Christ grants entrance. And the natural continuance of the turning is a growing humbleness of mind. No claims, no demands, no rights, just humble submission to God's word and will. And this child is perfectly content and happy, depending on Jesus. Thus, most ironically, not pursuing greatness makes one great. The character of faith is greatness as God estimates it. The just shall live by faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. We have before us a paradox. The least is the greatest. 
A paradox is a seemingly absurd or self-contradictory statement or proposition that when you investigate it or it is explained, it proves to be well-founded and true. It's from the Latin para, distinct from, and doxa, opinion. The world's definition and opinion of greatness and God's are not the same. And this paradox is easily solved. Only an empty vessel can be filled. A full one cannot be. And that's the underlying principle of grace. The law says we're empty, in need, dependent on our Father for all things. And faith believes this. Now about here, we could diverge into another hour or so of preaching on this pericope. But in the interest of getting invited back next week, I'm not going to do that. But children's ability to be believing, the treatment of children, angels, the value of a, a single child and believer in sheep, the one such of verse 5, the discipline that's involved, entrapment, temptation, the office of the keys, many, many topics are here that could be preached on. But I want to stick with the main point. To believe means to trust. Even in adults, this is the inner essential of their faith. Now, we're adults. We know there can be a lot of discursive thought. There can be some intelligent apprehension. There can be some introspective consciousness. But childlike trust is the point. We're always telling kids to grow up. Well, today I'm telling you for just a minute, don't do that. In the matter of trust, the child is the model for the adult, not the adult for the child. The child's natural traits illustrate what Jesus desires us to become. As a child, trust his mother and father. We're to trust spiritually. The essential quality of faith is trust. And our Lutheran sola fide, faith alone, takes that in. Martin Luther said that justification by faith is the doctrine by which the church stands or falls. The law tells us we're sinful, and we confess and repent of that sinfulness. We trust that Christ came, died on the cross, rose again, and for his sake alone we are forgiven. This we believe, and we trust that our standing before God is in Christ. We are his children, and as his child, our death will be falling asleep in the arms of Jesus and waking up at home much like we did when we were children. I would address you this morning, children. The just shall live by faith. Believe that. Trust it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. At this time we'll receive our offering. Please rise for the prayers of the church. Knowing that the Lord has promised to be in our midst whenever two or three are gathered in his name, let us bring our prayers and our supplications before him. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy for all pastors in Christ, that as God's watchmen,
they may be faithful in calling sinners to repentance and joyfully announcing the Lord's forgiveness to those who heed their warning. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the faithful, that each of us may serve as our brother's keeper, both in our earthly families and among our brothers and sisters in Christ, and that we may owe no one anything except to love each other. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our leaders, that they would bear their office righteously, and for all who protect us, especially our armed forces, police, and firefighters. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the ill, grieving, and lonely, especially for those who have requested our prayers and those that we now name in our hearts. That they may remember that the good shepherd who loves them seeks and saves the one lost sheep. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For childlike faith, that in it we may be strengthened in faith toward God and in fervent love toward one another. Let us pray to the Lord. For all God's little ones, that they would not perish, but be called back to him when tempted to stray, delivered from temptation and kept in the faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for the Lord's will, plan, and timing, and for the man he has prepared to be our under-shepherd, that all things will work together for good, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, hear us as we pray in Jesus' name, the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. With believing hearts, receive now the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. At this time, we'll sing the doxology, and everybody sing as strong as you can. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I know we have at least one announcement. There you are, brother. And you had something? I was going to ask you and Mom that today was the last day for Ann to be here for the meeting of Holy Week. And they brought the cover for her uh, when they have a coffee. I understand you're not going to be here today because you have that take it over and take it away order. <laughs> they were called the Olive Company. Oh, okay. So, pray, pray for Bob and Ann. We really will miss them. 
All right. Any other announcements? Yes, sir. I think maybe I'm helping in the kitchen that day. All right. Anything else for the Lord Saints to hear from you today? Hearing nothing, go forth and serve the Lord with trust and gladness. Dominus vobiscum. Amen.